Good morning, everyone. I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today, I'm coming at you with our weekly Minx Monday Q&A. And before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently using. And that is the Louis Vuitton Pouchette Matisse. I transferred over to this this past weekend, and I have been loving every minute of it. All right, so let's get started with the very first question, shall we? From Tony V. Could you share what you use your Josephine pouch for or what fits inside? For example, does cash fit without folding a credit card and ID? Okay, so if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you guys know how much I rave about the Josephine wallet. Now, it does come with a removable coin pouch. What I prefer to use this coin pouch for is uh, as a little mini wallet whenever I'm going compact because it's very, very slim. It doesn't take up too much space, even though it is the size of a full-length wallet. Uh, and in here, I will put everything, all of my loyalty cards, my driver's license, my credit cards, everything fits in here, you name it. You are able to put a, um, you know, like a lipstick, a very slender lipstick in here. It might make a little bit bulky, uh, but you're all, you are definitely able to do that. So in here I have a few um, little loyalty cards just so you guys can see. Now, I was able to put the bill in here completely flat um, and not having to fold it. And I'm able to zip it up without a problem. However, <clears throat> it does take a little bit of time to be able to do that. So I don't know about you guys, but usually when I have cash in my wallet, I really try to go as quick. I really try to get it as quickly as I possibly can. Uh, and sometimes I don't have the, you know, the, the patience, if you will, to be able to make sure it's, if it's folded in here nice and neatly, because you do have to put it in at an angle and then you have to kind of like smooth it out. You are able to do that, but for me, I think it takes too long, so I prefer to just fold them in half and put them inside without a problem. Uh, now, it is almost to the edge of where the teeth are, as you can see there, um, and there have been times that I have zipped it up and it gets caught in the zipper, but uh, you are able to close it up without a problem. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, it's sometimes it'll end. See, it's starting to crease right there, but you are able to definitely put cash in there without having to fold it. If you have a little bit more time to be able to, uh, organize them in here, but this is awesome for a little mini wallet. I think this is fantastic. Plus it's very, very carefree because there's literally no vaquetta, nothing that you have to worry about. I mean, yes, the little pull tab is leather, but you don't have to worry too much about it. So I like that feature. I don't have to, you know, I don't have to be too careful. And that's, that's awesome for me with any wallet, really. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay. From Charlene Go, I'm, Looking at getting either a Louis Vuitton Clooney versus the Alma BB as a going out bag that I can transition from day to night. What are the pros and cons of each and which do you prefer? Now, even though I do absolutely love the Alma BB, which retails for $15.90 in the Epi leather, if that's what you are uh, referring to because the Clooney, I think that's how you pronounce it, uh, that is an Epi. Uh, I do like the Alma BB. I, I've talked about it quite a bit here on Minx Monday, and uh, I do love the fact that you're able to transition from day to night without a problem. However, the Louis Vuitton Clooney bag, which retails for $2,500 here in the States, I feel is just a tad more sophisticated. It's a little bit classier. I think it's extremely... Um, it looks very timeless, to be honest. Uh, the only thing I didn't like about it when I saw it at the boutique is how you put on the uh, the shoulder strap, the little, uh, the little what's it called, um, the little D-rings that you attach it to. I just didn't like how it kind of popped up, kind of like the Marley. I think it's the, Mar is it the Marley? It's somewhat like that, but I really do like the Clooney. It has the flap open uh, closure, and I, I just think it's beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful bag. I think both are great options, but if I had to... If I had to take it one step further and I wanted it to be just a tad more sophisticated, I would go with the Louis Vuitton Clooney. Uh, but again, it's almost a thousand dollar difference between the two when really the Alma BB is just as wonderful and it does the exact same thing as the other one does. So uh, for price purposes, if I had to go with it, I would go with the Alma BB for just a little bit more, you know, just a tad a tad more classiness, I would go for the uh, Louis Vuitton Clooney, but really not too much more because they're both fantastic. Uh, okay. Kayla Alexandra, what is your opinion on Longchamp? Would you ever add a Longchamp bag to your collection? Uh, I answered this, I think a few months ago. Um, I am not a fan of Longchamp. Now, not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just not for me. I don't, I don't find them appealing 
Uh, I think they're, even though I do like simple bags, I just don't like the fact that they have absolutely no structure. But on the flip side, I can definitely appreciate how carefree they are and how, I mean, there's so many people that rave about them, that, but I can tell you with certainty that Longchamp is not a brand for me. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to be very, <clears throat> I'm trying to be very nice here. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Judith DeLuna, we are going to Taiwan next week. Is it okay that I bring my Chanel GST to this trip? Uh, as much as I would, I would love to say, yes, go ahead and take your GST. It's a beautiful bag. I feel that may, it might be a little too bulky for, uh, crowded areas. And even though it is a little bit taller and it does have a zippered compartment in the middle, um, it doesn't have the most, uh, security and, um, you know, that might be, that might be a, a downside to it. Uh, but again, I just think because there's, you know, if there's too many crowds, especially if you're going somewhere, um, you know, just in general, I, I would advise against it. I would prefer, or I would suggest a, uh, a bag that's closer to your body, maybe a crossbody. And I know, trust me, I'm not the biggest fan of crossbodies either, but uh, something where you can be hands-free, something that you don't have to worry about too much, and it's right up against your body, so you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, um, any 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 pit pockets or anything like that. You never know. I'm just I'm just trying to state as to what I would do if I was traveling. I always like to have something a little bit smaller, something that doesn't take up too much space, something that I could be hands-free with, and something that's definitely up against my body. Uh, that's what I would suggest. <clears throat> okay, uh, Mini Mazumdar. I'm so sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Uh, I'm considering either the Neverfull GM Mono or the Mono Turin GM. I like the structure and the size of the Neverfull, but I like the Turin because of the security with the zipper, and I worry about security with the Neverfull. What do you think I should do? P.S. I love your Instagram. Thank you so much. You're so sweet. Uh, okay, so between the two, I think both are great options. Obviously, the Turin or Turin, whichever it is, uh, has a great um, you know versatility because you're able to wear a crossbody and things like that. But even with the fact that it has a crossbody strap, even with the fact that it has a little bit more uh, organization inside and the fact that it has a zipper, I still prefer the Neverfull. I just absolutely love that toe and, you know, I rave about it all the time. And if you want a little bit more security, I know there are some purse organizers that come with zippers that you can put inside the Neverfull if you wanted to. Uh, and another bonus is that if you add a purse organizer to the Neverfull, it will keep its structure even better. So that is an option for you. Uh, but if you absolutely love, love the Turin or the Turin, I would go for it if that's what makes your heart sing. But personally, I prefer the Neverfull over that one. Um, but that's just, that's just my personal preference because I don't really, I'm not too worried about zippers. Um, when it comes to just everyday bags that I'm going to be carrying. So if it is absolutely something that's important to you, then I would definitely follow, uh, follow your heart. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, treats of luxury. Could you tell me which Chanel bag is the most carefree and convenient for you and which model you prefer and why? I'm thinking about getting one, but I'm so unsure about the model, the size, the color and material. I definitely know that I love the gold hardware and it has to be carefree and not too heavy. This is a fantastic question. Now I can obviously only speak for the, the collection that I have because there's I'm sure there's tons and tons of other wonderful bags that Chanel has that are just as great and very, very carefree. In my opinion, um, even though I do love my jumbo and it's one of my favorite bags, I'm going to have to say that the classic flap in the medium large size in the caviar leather, caviar leather to me is definitely 100% the most carefree. You don't have to worry about it whatsoever. I've used mine in the rain and nothing has happened to it. Um, and I really like the size. The the medium large is, I mean, like night or day and night compared to the uh, to the jumbo. This is so incredibly easy to carry. I absolutely love carrying this bag. And even though you have to go a little bit more compact whenever you're transitioning from a larger bag to this bag, I still love it. It is so comfortable. It is so. I don't, I don't even know. <laughs> it is, it's just the ease of being able to carry this is magnificent. 
and obviously you would be able to get your combo with the gold hardware and black uh, and like I said before I would suggest the caviar leather uh, and I just I think it's great uh, you can wear this crossbody it looks a little funky because it's a little bit shorter uh, but I personally like to wear it on one long strap on my shoulder and I just really really like the way that it looks I cannot rave about this item enough uh, and like I said before even though I do like the jumbo it can get heavy this one is just I mean, you can barely feel it on your on your shoulder, and it's just so wonderful and so fun to be able to carry. So this would be my option out of the collection that I have. But like I said before, there's a lot of other wonderful Chanel bags that I'm sure um, you know people can can let us know in the description in the comment section down below what they would recommend. But that would be my uh, my option definitely. Uh, okay, Lisa Erickson, when buying pre loved Louis Vuitton, what years should I look for as far as being better quality. I've been looking at a Neverfull MM and it was made in 2009 and from France. Just wondering if that year would be better than buying brand new. Um, this is a little bit, uh, this is a, a tricky question and I think it's because even though I've had better success with items wearing a little bit better from different years, obviously everything, you know, everyone's going to be, uh, different. Uh, some people might say 2013, 2012 were some of the best pre-loved years, or maybe you can go back to, um, as far as the mid nineties that those were fantastic. Personally, I will have to say that from 2009, 2000, 10 and 2000, 2011 were probably some of the best years. I have purchased quite a bit uh, from those years, in those years, and I've also purchased from those years uh, pre-loved, and I have never really had an issue with them. Uh, and obviously, we, you know, we've talked about the... Um, the issues occurring with the newer pieces and stuff like that. But, uh, I have had the best of luck with those three years. I haven't had any issues. I haven't needed to get anything repaired. Uh, and that's what I would suggest. But again, other people might say that something from the mid nineties or the late nineties would be fantastic or the, you know, two thousands were great. Uh, honestly, I would have to say that all the older pieces, um, just really, really wore extremely well, whether you were getting canvas, whether you were getting epi leather or vernie, it just seems that they held up a little bit better. Uh, so I would definitely go for that. Like I told you guys last week, my, my six key holder is from 2006, you know, and it barely now needs to get repaired. Uh, so for me that, that speaks volume. So I like anything really from 2011 and, uh, and older. That's what I would suggest. But like I said, everyone's going to have a different opinion on it. Um, but that is just what I have, uh, run into with, with those years. Uh, okay, Don Scalsi. I'm so sorry if I pronounced that wrong. I recently purchased a vintage Louis Vuitton Petite Noé, a 1983 model. Woo -woo! <laughs> awesome, congratulations. Uh, <clears throat> and the bag is in excellent condition, except for the leather cord. I was also thinking about replacing the handle, even though it looks pretty good. And it seems a bit thin at the connection points. Do you think if Louis Vuitton, do you know if Louis Vuitton sells replacement handles and the leather cord for the petite? No way. Okay. So I have some awesome news for you guys. Uh, I called, um, my, uh, the manager at the location that I usually shop at. And I also called the 188 number, 1866 number just to make sure. And they both had the exact same answer, which made me extremely happy. Um, I wanted to know if there is a cutoff point on, you know, if there's an age as to what, how, how old an item can be that, that can be repaired. Uh, and to answer your question before I get ahead of myself, uh, yes, I do believe they still have all the parts because the Petit Noé is such a classic item. It's still in production, so they will definitely still have uh, the pieces for it, so you can definitely get it repaired. Uh, but Louis Vuitton said that there is no age that anything can be fixed, and that blew me away because that makes me so happy. So, you know, speaking of pre-loved items, you can get an item from the, you know, 1995, and as long as it's in repairable condition, so it can't be completely completely falling apart and then you expect to get, you know, to fix it. Uh, you can't expect them to fix it to make it look like a brand new bag, but it has to, for example, it can't have any cracking canvas, but as long as it's able to be repaired. So if you need to get the leather repaired, that's not a problem. Um, they'll, they'll do it. It doesn't matter the age of the item. And I even asked her with the que this question in mind, I said, what if it's from, you know, 1983? She said, it doesn't matter. The only thing that they don't fix anymore is uh, Louis Vuitton pieces with, um, 
the French company logo because they don't have the parts available to be able to repair them anymore. But if you want a bag from 1990 and if it's still in pretty good condition, maybe you need to get it relined. Maybe you need to get the leather completely replaced. Maybe you need to get just some stitches done. They will do it. It doesn't matter the age. And that made me so incredibly happy because, you know, it's always like this dark cloud that we've been talking about with repair. But this, this made it seem like, I don't know, like, there was light shining down or something. I don't know. That sounds super corny and super stupid, but I, it just made me happy. I don't know about you guys, but I was just, you know, I was expecting to hear something like, oh, after 15 years, you know, there's nothing we can do. But when you're talking about being able to fix something that's 30 plus years old, that makes me happy. That is what I expect of Louis Vuitton. So yes, <laughs> I'm excited. So congratulations on your petite Noe, but I had to share the information with you guys. Um, <clears throat> And remember, everything's always a case by case scenario. So I would always take it into the boutique just in case, just so they can like, uh, so they can look over it, and um, you know, you guys can go from there. Uh, okay, <laughs> uh, scent lover and Robin Russell had similar questions. What are your thoughts on the Louis Vuitton kimono bag? Uh, the kimono bag uh, retails for $32.50 here in the states. It has part leather and part. Um, canvas. I think that the silhouette is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I love the fact that it has a middle zip compartment on inside. It has the microfiber leather. It has a little bit more organization. The only thing I do not like about it is its price tag because, and the reason I say that, even though it is a beautiful bag uh, and it doesn't come with a shoulder strap, which makes me super happy, <laughs> um, is because it has canvas on there. And with a $3,250 $3, price tag, I think that is way too much for it to have any type of canvas on there. Now, if it was all leather, I would be completely 100% all for it. I put a, I would have probably already added it to my collection because I'm, I think it's such a great looking bag, but I just don't want it to have any canvas on it whatsoever with that type of price tag. And I've always talked to you guys about that. I have a cutoff point as to how much I will spend on a canvas bag because you know, it, it's, it's coated canvas, it's, it's coated cotton and, or it's coated canvas. And I just, for those type of price tags, I just prefer to get something that is all leather. That is just my personal preference, but trust me, the bag is absolutely gorgeous. And Robin Russell, uh, she commented on the Dune and before I used to think that the noir the noir kimono was probably the best looking one, but I would have to agree with Robin. The dune just elevates it to a whole different level. It is just absolutely stunning. Uh, but I, I personally think it's just a little too expensive, uh, for my taste. That's just my opinion though. Uh, okay. Margaret S in a previous video, you mentioned some Louis Vuitton pieces look better in monogram and some look better in Damier. Which pieces do you like in which canvas? Also, how often have you returned items to a boutique because they ended up not working out? I never really talk about my items with an essay because I do my research research beforehand. And then I like to try them out for a week or two to see if it really is the item I will use. I've only had to do this. I've only had to do one exchange and one return so far, but I felt bad and I'm not sure how boutiques feel about this, especially since there's only a two week window to return at LV. Thank you for your videos. You are so welcome, Margaret. Uh, okay. So the way that I feel about it. Okay. Um, if you, if someone is a chronic shopper and they return excessively, I think that's when it's a problem. When you just go in there, you buy something and then maybe a week later you return it. And I think that's when, uh, I don't remember, is it after, I think it's after eight, I want to say, or seven returns that they will kind of put a cutoff, um, as to how many more items you can return after that. I'm not too sure. I don't want to, I don't want to start any rumors. Uh, but I, I, I distinctly remember thinking it was under 10 that if you return within the, within the year that they will end up kind of just cutting you off. Um, but I agree with you. Um, when it comes to the price tag of all of these luxury goods, whether it's Louis Vuitton, whether it's Chanel or whoever it is, uh, you want to feel very comfortable about the item that you're buying. And sometimes 
you know, going to the boutique and trying it out there is just isn't enough. Uh, you know, some people might feel pressured by the sales associates. Some people might feel more comfortable in, in their own home being able to try it on with different outfits and whatnot. And, um, you know, I always say if you can be at the boutique for 10 or I'm sorry, for five hours and it takes five hours to make a decision, then so be it. But if you want to get in and out and then try it at home and see how you feel without having, you know, the, the pressure of the sales associate there, then I think that's another great option because you want to make sure, you know what I mean? And I, I'm with you with, with returns. I try not to return as, uh, uh, you know, at all. I try to be, I, I try to do my research as much as I can. I try to figure out. And when I go to purchase a bag, I want to make sure that that is the item that I'm going for. Uh, when it comes to Louis Vuitton, I think, okay, so the Emprunt Clay and Poppy, because it was scratched, and then I decided against it, which you guys know, I told you guys in the video, uh, the grape, um, I returned that because it wasn't there. It wasn't at the boutique, so there was no way for me to be able to try it out at the store. Actually, with both Emprunt clays, because they they hadn't hit the stores yet, so there's no possible way for me to see what they would look like. And obviously, I didn't want to miss out. <clears throat> the uh, what else have I returned? Um, the Palace Shopper, another one that I bought blindly, thinking it was going to work out for me. So re really, I should have waited uh, till I was, I was at the boutique to see if it worked out. And the only other item that I that I uh, had to uh, return was the uh, shine shawl because it had a loose thread through it. Um, and every one that they had after that, they, they were all, um, pretty much damaged before you, before I even bought it. So I just decided against it. I thought it was a little too, um, too delicate for my lifestyle. I think that's it. I can't recall another bag that I have purchased that I have returned. Oh my goodness. You guys would know better than me. Cause I have, <laughs> sometimes I have the worst memory. Um, I think that's it. There might be one other item, one or two other items, but in all of the years that I've been buying Louis Vuitton. So, I mean, it's safe to say maybe four or five items that I've only had to return. And, um, I think one of them I exchanged. Uh, but you know, um, I think that some of the, I think that some of the SLGs look better in Damier. I just think that they look a little bit nicer. I don't know. And I feel that even though they cater mostly to the monogram print for handbags, I think that some of those handbags that only come in canvas or in the uh, monogram print would look fantastic as Damier Ben. Case in point, this bag right here, I think would look fantastic in Damier Ben. Uh, another one would be the Artsy. I've talked about that before. I think that would look beautiful. Uh, what else? What else is there? There's a few other bags that I think that would look, you know, beautiful in the, in the, in some of the, in some of the uh, silhouettes that are only offered in canvas, uh, you know, but, um, I think I prefer small leather goods in the Demi Ben and maybe the bags in the monogram. But again, if they had the same prints in those other bags, then I would go for that and it would be vice versa. I don't even know if that makes any sense, but, <laughs> uh, that's just how I feel. You know, I don't feel that they don't, I feel that they don't give Demi a Ben enough to be able to shine through with how as beautiful as that pattern is, especially because you don't have to have the logo just screaming everywhere. If you want something maybe a little bit more subtle, I think that the checkers from Demi a Ben or Demi Azor are a little bit better. But I really wish that they offered just more bags, more beautiful bags in the Demi A. Ben print. Uh, but yeah, I haven't returned too many items, so I'm happy to say that. And not that I can think of. I think those are the only ones, right? I think so. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I like to be very focused and very, you know, when I set my heart on an item, then that's the one that it is. Chanel, now that's a whole different story because... The, the leathers and the sizes, those, those get to me just a little bit more, <laughs> but no, I agree with you, Margaret. Uh, you want to feel comfortable and you want to feel great about whatever it is that you're purchasing. Okay. Uh, Valerie Barone, I would like to buy a Demi a Ben wallet, but I cannot decide between the Sarah and the Zippy. I have the Koala and Demi Azor and the Clements and Mono. Uh, okay. So between the Sarah and the Zippy, personally, I prefer the Zippy. Um, you know, it has a little bit more security. You can use it as a clutch if you wanted to, if you're talking about the, um, whether you get the Zippy organizer, the regular Zippy or the compact Zippy, I think they are all great. Uh, I, I'm not too keen on the 
compact zippy anymore because of how they changed the design, but the regular zippy is fantastic. It's just such a great wallet. You're able to fit so much in there. And uh, if you absolutely have a lot of items that you carry with you daily, then I would go for that one. If you have a little bit less, I would go for the Sarah, uh, especially, um, you know, even though I'm not too big of a fan on the Sarah wallet, that is actually their number one seller. Uh, but uh, I prefer the zippy over, over the Sarah. And that's just my personal opinion. <clears throat> Uh, okay. Liz Fizz Bubble. That is a cool name. <laughs> uh, what do you think of the new Louis Vuitton Victorine compact wallet? Would love to hear your thoughts. Okay. So the Louis Vuitton Victorine wallet, hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Probably not. Retails for $540, $540 here in the States. It is available in the monogram canvas with the colors, uh, Rose Ballerine and Fuchsia. I think that is a fantastic fantastic wallet. And the reason I say that is because it's compact. It has a lot of credit card slots. Uh, it kind of reminds me of the, um, oh, what is it? Is it the Mary, Mary Lou or the Helen wallet? I can't remember which one it is, but it remind or the Marie wallet, not the Mary Lou, uh, the Marie wallet. That's what it reminds me of. Uh, but you do have to think about the, the fact that it is a trifold. Uh, so it will have a little bit more wear on the edges, kind of like I showed you guys on the six ring key holder last, uh, last week but I love it. It's compact. It's beautiful. It has those two colors. Uh, and even though I do love the color pink, I'm really hoping that Louis Vuitton will move in the step of adding different colors to their items. Maybe not so much pink. And trust me, it's, I, I, like I said before, I love the color pink and I think it's fantastic, but I think they should offer other colors. I think something a little bit more fun because not everyone likes pink, you know what I mean? And not everyone likes red, um, but uh, I, hopefully they will add a little bit more colors in that wallet, but I think it's fantastic. Doesn't take up too much space. It's still a pretty good price point, uh, but it has so, so many little compartments in there that you can fit all of your items in there. So I think it's a fantastic, fantastic wallet. Uh, okay. And the last question is sparkly pink wisteria. What is your opinion on the Louis Vuitton twist MM? It is $3,500. Should I save a little more and get the Chanel instead? Uh, the Louis Vuitton twist, um, I'm not too crazy about it. Uh, I think it looks too much like a boy, like a Chanel Le Boy bag. And I've told you guys in the past that I would rather go with the fashion house that created that design initially. Uh, however, the, the twist, I mean, it, it is, it fits so much in there. And the fact that it has that little wave, um, that little wave structure to it, you're able to fit a little bit more in there. Uh, and it's, it's a very, very pretty bag. I love the chain detail that it has. I, I really do love the chain and I kind of like the, the way that you open it up, but it's not the most appealing bag to me in my opinion, but I know those people that, uh, that own the bag, they rave about it. They think it's a fantastic bag. Um, but I personally would rather save up for a Chanel Le Boy bag if that's what you're, you're going towards, or even a classic flat for that matter. Um, you know, and one thing I do like about the classic flaps in general is the fact that they don't have an extra, uh, you know, like an extra leather tab in between the leather so that you can put it on your shoulders on your shoulder. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but I don't, I kind of like the fact that you just have the leather kind of intertwined on the Chanel bags. Um, I'm not too crazy about it having just a little section of leather and then the chain. Um, that just, it just looks a little funky to me. Uh, but, uh, if you're, if you're thinking about a classic flap or a twist, I would definitely go for a classic flap over the twist. That's just my personal opinion. But like I said, everyone that owns a twist, they love the bag and they think it's a great addition to their collection. Uh, all right, you guys. So that does it for Minx Monday Q and A. Thank you guys so much for all of the wonderful questions. Uh, this week I have a couple, I have a review for you on the keep all 45 bandolier. Uh, and I also have a, um, a little bit of a different spin on a review for the Neverfull MM or the Neverfull in general. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.